O who believe, fasting is decreed for you as it was decreed for those before you. Perchance you will guard yourselves. The month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was sent down a guidance for the people and clear verses of guidance and criterion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, hello and welcome to Lanterns. My name is Moyad J. Kat. During the course of the holy month of Ramadan, Lanterns, insha'Allah, will be with you on a daily basis. We'll be talking about some important aspects of the blessed month, and we're going to visit many Muslim countries and take a look at their lifestyle and traditions during Ramadan. Now, as we enter the holy month, it is appropriate that every Muslim should receive Ramadan with repentance and sincerity above anything else. We should make the intention to perform extra acts of devotion and worship, including the night prayer, Qiyam al-Layl, recitation of the Quran, and abundant charity to the poor and needy. These all are things that most of us might already know. But let's see what our great Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had told us about the coming of Ramadan. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, addressed his companions on the last day of Sha'ban. He said, O people, a great month has come over you, a blessed month, a month in which a night is better than a thousand months, a month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it compulsory upon us to fast by day and voluntary to pray by night. Whoever draws nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by performing the good deeds in this month shall receive the same reward as performing an obligatory deed at any other time. And whoever discharges an obligatory deed in this month shall receive the reward of performing 70 obligations at any other time. It is the month of patience, and the reward of patience is heaven. It is the month of charity, and a month in which a believer's sustenance is increased. Whoever gives food to a fasting person to break his fast shall have his sins forgiven, and he will be saved from the fire of hell, and he shall have the same reward as the fasting person without his reward being diminished at all. In another hadith narrated by at tabarani the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said Ramadan has come to you, a month of blessing, a month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers you with blessing, for he sends down mercy, decreases sins, and answers prayers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your competition in good deeds and boasts about you to his angels. So show Allah goodness from yourselves. For the unfortunate one is he who is deprived in this month of the mercy of Allah, the mighty, the exalted. These two hadiths bring our attention to the state of readiness and preparation for receiving Ramadan. This is achieved by having a clear understanding of the holy month in one's mind and greeting Ramadan with love and yearning. Also one should have the determination and intention to perform good deeds and worship and it's probably not a bad idea to lay down a program to accomplish this in the days of the blessed month. At the start of the program we promised you reports from Muslim countries through which we're going to identify and report to you about their traditions during the holy month of Ramadan. Through our first report for today, we're going to have a look at traditions in Syria during the holy month of Ramadan. We'll be back right after this report, so don't go anywhere.
Here in Syria, uh, we enjoy Ramadan very much. Um, as for Ramadan, everybody uh, as a Muslim uh, welcomes Ramadan. Uh, we all enjoy the days and hours of Ramadan. We enjoy the nights of Ramadan, especially the meetings, the family meetings where uh, everybody uh, sits together uh, on the table of Ramadan, which is usually full of uh, different uh, dishes, uh, full of different kinds of food and drinks. In Ramadan, uh, people feel very happy. They enjoy the hours of, and the days of Ramadan, the nights of Ramadan. Uh, the nights of Ramadan are very special. People go to the mosques to make uh, al Isha prayer, and after that they perform the Taraweeh. And usually in many mosques there are uh, lectures after the prayer. People listen to lectures uh, about Ramadan and the excellence of this month the great rewards from Allah for those who fast and for those who uh, preserve the good morals and the good character of Ramadan. People also visit each other, especially in this month and at the end of this month uh, when the Eid comes. But uh, Ramadan reminds them of uh, their relatives and that they should be kind of their relatives. Uh, so this uh, month is very, very special because of the good relationships, because of the good social uh, activities that happen in Ramadan. In Ramadan also many people pay, pay zakat and pay a lot of charities. Uh, they give to the needy and to the poor and they give to charitable societies. So you find in this month a lot of uh, good uh, deeds and uh, good uh, worship. Ramadan in fact is the month of every good and every charity. Uh, people feel very close to Allah in this month. Uh, because they, they have this patience, because they have this uh, uh, kind relationships, because they remember Allah very much, they read Qur'an, you find people reading Qur'an every day, they try to finish the whole Qur'an in, in one month, uh, some try to do more than that, they can uh, sometimes finish it uh, two or three times, and they consider this uh, an act of worship by which they come closer to Allah. So in general, you can say that uh, Ramadan is the spring of the whole year, and people wish, of course the believers, uh, wish that all the year was Ramadan, as Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, if my nation or if my ummah knew the value of Ramadan, they would uh, wish that the whole year was Ramadan. And that's what we feel here. In Syria, um, nearly as in other uh, Arab, Arab and Muslim countries, uh, the time of uh, work changes um, because people start, uh, usually start at eight or nine o'clock in the, in the other days, in Ramadan it is a little different and uh, all uh, people would finish work before Maghrib, before sunset, in order to be able to uh, reach home and sit together with their families and have uh, the iftar, the breakfast uh, together. So this is one, one kind of change. Uh, and usually in, uh, after uh, they have their, uh, their uh, breakfast 
after they break their fast and uh, they wait for the Isha and the Taraweeh and after that they usually either go back home to receive uh, guests or they go and visit other people in their homes. Some would go to, to bed early in order to be able to get early also to, to, to have suhoor. Uh, others uh, stay up late. They do not go to bed till after they have finished the suhoor and the dawn prayer. Now that we're back, we hope you enjoyed our report. And before we, before we go on, we want you to know there's another report coming, so stay with us. As many of you might know, the month of Ramadan excels over any of the other months. This fact is verified by both the Qur'an and Sunnah. It is the month of the Qur'an with regards to revelation and study. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is a translation of course, the month of Ramadan is that in which the Qur'an was revealed. According to Hadith, on the authority of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, Angel Gabriel used to meet the Prophet, peace be upon him, every night in Ramadan and used to study Qur'an with him. It is the month of seclusion. Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, used to seclude himself for the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. In Arabic, seclusion is referring to the word i'tikaf. Ramadan is a month of generosity. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to be at his most generous in Ramadan. It is the month of standing in voluntary night prayer. Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, reported the Prophet, peace be upon him, said whoever stands in voluntary night prayer during Ramadan out of faith and in expectancy of reward, his past sins would be forgiven. It is the month of compulsory fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever among you witnesses the month referring to Ramadan, they should fast. Of course, many people today mix Ramadan with fasting as if they are synonymous. But the fact of the matter is that fasting is one of many acts of worship in Ramadan. Many hadiths have been reported from the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, explaining the distinction of Ramadan, of which we have selected the following. The month of Ramadan has come to you, a month of goodness and blessing. The master of the months is Ramadan and the master of the days is Friday. According to Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said whoever fasted Ramadan with faith and in expectancy of reward, his previous sins would be forgiven. When Ramadan comes, 
the gates of heaven are opened and the gates of hell are closed and the devils are chained and in a narration from an Nasai, the following words are added and a caller calls out every night O seeker of good draw near O seeker of evil desist with all these blessings and all of this mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is no surprise the Prophet peace be upon him had made it crystal clear how important this month is for us take this good advice and use it to your own good don't waste your time nor hesitate subhanallah one thing is for sure being a good Muslim a Muslim who enjoys Allah's love could only mean happiness both here in this life and in the hereafter the kind of happiness I'm talking about isn't material it's about satisfaction a feeling which comes from the heart one of the countless blessings of Ramadan is that it should not escape us the fact that Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed this beautiful book of guidance is ours so let us strive this Ramadan to draw closer to Allah by increasing our reading of the Quran and increasing our voluntary prayers through our second report today we visit the kingdom of Saudi Arabia let's take a look at the people of Saudi Arabia's traditions during the blessed month Usually in Saudi Arabia, we uh, get ready to uh, re receive Ramadan. We uh, just, first of all, the uh, government tell us when the start of Ramadan began. So we get ready to start fasting uh, and getting ready for some kind of food and uh, getting for new schedule. Uh, as we know, the day of Ramadan starting getting sahur, it should be uh, before the sun rise, we call it sahur. So this meal is sahur uh, and it's getting ready for the whole day, to fast the whole day, so we have to get enough food. Uh, usually before the sun rise, we have to stop eating and drinking. As we know, we have only two meals. One is at the beginning of the day and we call it sahur and the second one is the breaking of the fast it's uh, at uh, sundown so most of the people they uh, get ready with good food they, because they should eat good food in sahur so it will give them energy in the whole day but they shouldn't sleep after sahur so they when they eat the sahur they should have some uh, relax so they will go to do the Fajr prayer and when they come they will relax for a while then get some sleep to get ready to work as we know uh, the holy month of Ramadan is uh, there is a lot of uh, worship of God so it's different from other months so as we say there is uh, fasting this is the most important worship is fasting and uh, reading Quran as we said uh, performing uh, Salat al Taraweeh, prayer of Taraweeh, and the prayer of Tahajjid, uh, reading a lot of Qurans, visiting uh, f I mean families, and uh, worshiping God for uh, being good for everybody, 
and uh, getting remember the poor people so you will give some food to and some money to poor people so so they will get enough food to uh, get uh, fasting this holy month as we know this month is you know there is uh, we should some people they prefer to do umrah so this, is, this Umrah is visiting, as Muslims people they know, it's visiting Mecca and doing Umrah uh, for, uh, because it's very important and it's worthful for getting this Umrah during month of Ramadan. As we know, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is a very huge country and uh, it's, they have different regions. These regions, they have, so they have little bit of uh, different traditions, especially in food. You know, worshiping God, it's, you know, told, told by uh, Prophet Muhammad, and it's mostly the same in all over the Muslim countries. But uh, some different, you know, like some eating, uh, eating food, uh, visiting families. So there is some different from different, from different regions of Saudi Arabia. So uh, as we know, in the central region, they eat some dates, uh, milk or buttermilk, uh, some rice and chicken. Uh, in other area like uh, Mecca area, they eat some kind of uh, uh, beans with uh, bread during the breakfast. After they eat the dates and drink some coffee, so they like to have the beans and uh, eat some bread. Really, I would like to have this opportunity to congratulate especially the custodian of the Holy Mosque, King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz and His Royal Highness, Highness Prince Sultan bin Abdul Aziz. I would like to congratulate to the Saudi nation and all the Muslim nations for this coming Ramadan. I hope for everybody get ready and try his best to read Quran and try to do all the prayers on time, doing the, as I said, Taraweeh prayer, and uh, getting, you know, get uh, mean, uh, care of uh, poor people. So they should look after poor people and try to give them some food and money to support them uh, doing this holy month of fasting and doing worship to Allah. I really, I congratulate everybody, Muslims people, to enjoy this month and try to benefit from this holy month by doing a lot of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hello again and welcome to Lanterns. I'm Moya J. Kat. The holy month of Ramadan is blessed because of the countless opportunities we have to mention the name of Allah, the Prophet, peace be upon him, stated that no people gather in a house from the houses of Allah, reciting the book of Allah and studying the book amongst themselves, except that tranquility descends upon them. Mercy envelops them and the angels surround them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them to those that are with him. I hope you have all enjoyed today's edition of Lanterns. Inshallah, we will be with you tomorrow. I'd like to thank the program's crew. Until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.